Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Post Cologne. Today I'm gonna to tell you about seven fragrances I wore this week that were recommended by Jeremy Fragrance. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so whether you're just starting to get into fragrances or you've been doing this for a very long time, if you've been on YouTube, you've come across this man. Jeremy Fragrance is arguably the biggest YouTuber when it comes to the men's fragrance niche, and he is all over the place. He's been doing this for a very long time, and he's recommended some fragrances to me over the years that I've ended up purchasing. So I'm gonna run through seven of those that I wore this week, let you know which ones I think were maybe a little bit overhyped and which ones are absolute bangers. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so kicking things off on Saturday, I reached for a fragrance that Jeremy Fragrance has probably recommended to everybody a, a thousand times. I was a little hesitant to pick this one up. I've heard people say this one's a little bit dated and you know, it's it's for the older crowd or whatever, but I saw it for about 15 bucks at a rack store and I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna give this a shot. Everyone's talking about it. That's Versace Blue Jeans. Now you can pick this up pretty much everywhere. I see this all the time at rack stores. You can buy it online for about $20. I'm gonna have links down in the description if you do wanna check this one out. I ended up getting this at the rack store for about $15. And let me tell you, I'm really glad I finally pulled the trigger on this. This is, it is a little bit on maybe the classic dated side, but it's not like an old man grandpa style fragrance. That's kind of what I was expecting with this, but it's not. It's a very fresh, clean, citrusy, lavender style opening. Very sharp, very like, very clean. That's, that's probably the best way to describe this. It does have some like spicy florals mixed in there. And as this dries down, it gets this really nice vanilla sandalwood kind of sweet creaminess that comes through with those florals, that those, some of those spicy florals, those aromatic florals, and that citrus that sits on top. It's a beautiful scent profile. I'm not gonna go through all the notes because on Fragrantica, there's like a thousand notes to this. So I'm not gonna run through them all. But the combination of everything coming together, really, really nice fragrance. Yes, this is something probably for the 30, 40 plus crowds. Like, I don't think the younger guys are really gonna dig on this as much. This does have more of a gentlemanly kind of classic vibe to it, but it's not classic, like I said, in like your grandfather kind of way. This is like, you know, again, a little bit of the, the older gentleman, but not the senior citizens in my, in my opinion, at least. Maybe I'm just getting old, I'm just trying to justify it. But I really like this fragrance. I think it's a banger of a fragrance. Super glad I picked this up. Performance on this, some people say they get like beast mode performance on this. I did not experience that. I got about six hours of longevity, about average, and projection for the first, you know, two hours was beyond arm's length. It, it, decent performance on this, especially for the price points, but I didn't get beast mode performance on this. Some people say they do, it might be just my skin chemistry. This is just my experience and this is my opinion. But I was actually kind of surprised on how much other people enjoyed this. My girlfriend, for example, I don't always get compliments on my fragrance from my girlfriend. If, in fact, she'll sometimes roast me on my fragrances. She's the biggest critic, but fair enough, she has, she's the one that has to smell me the most. But she liked this one. She had never smelled this one on me before. I showed up at her place. As soon as I walked through the door, she, she was like, you're wearing something new. I've never smelled it on you before. And she just buried her nose into my neck, gave me a really good sniff. And I'm not sure if this is the greatest compliment, but it was coming from her. And she said, you smell like a really nice old library. I don't know if that's what this smells like. I, she's not a fragrance reviewer, so I'll cut her some slack. Bottom line is she really enjoyed this. She said it was it was very kind of like classy, masculine sort of vibe going on to it, but she said it's, you know, it's not like a fancy dress party, you know, dinner, formal night kind of idea. Very versatile fragrance, very casual as the name would suggest, Versace blue jeans. It's a very casual style of fragrance but it works, it just gives you that gentlemanly vibe. It is a little bit on the classic side, but it's just a great scent profile. I love the citrus cleanness of it, the sharpness of it, and that sweetness and that sandalwood that comes through in the base. Awesome fragrance, super glad I picked this up. That's Versace Blue Jeans. Moving into Sunday, it was a really nice day out and the summer's coming to an end here, so I, I wanted to kind of like draw out this whole citrus, spicy sort of aquatic style fragrance. And so I reached for something that Jeremy Fragrance always talks about and a lot of people roast the bottle and that is Perry Ellis 360 Red. Now this one is a very nice citrus, spicy, clean, a little bit watery aquatic notes to it. Got a really nice musk and wood in the base. It, the opening has this really nice citrus medley of like lime, bergamot. It's got some lavender that mixes in there, giving it a really nice, fresh, clean sort of feel to it. It's got some spices in there, some fresh spiciness to it, some watery notes. And on the dry down, like I said, you get some like musks coming through and some woods. If this sounds a little bit familiar, it's because this is kind of similar to Giorgio Armani's Aqua di Gio, the original which was my signature scent back in the day. I loved the original. The OG Aqua di Gio is one of my favorite fragrances. 
And I'd say this is a pretty close replica inspired by, this is a little bit more on the kind of the spicy side, I would say, but it's a very, very close Aqua de Gio sort of inspired by fragrance, let me say. Really clean, get that, you get that aquatic vibe from it, you get that spiciness that's in here and the citruses that run through, that clean lavender. Beautiful fragrance, I absolutely love wearing this one and I actually get better performance out of this than I do the OG Aqua de Gio off my skin at least. I get you know a good seven hours of longevity off this, projection in the first two hours like beyond arm's length. Really good performer for the price you pay. I picked this up for about $25, $30 on discounters. Again, I'm gonna have links down in the description if you wanna check this one out. Great, great cheapy. I really, really enjoy this one. I was a little, again, I was looking at this bottle and I'm just like, what is, what is going on here? But you never judge a book by its cover because the juice in here, absolutely fantastic. If you're looking for that fresh, citrusy, clean, aquatic with some of like masculine, musky woods tones to the base, this is a perfect fragrance to pick up for $25, $30. I think it's a steal of a deal. That's Periel's 360 Red. All right, moving into Monday, we had our very first very fall feeling day. It was cold, it was like rainy, a little bit dreary outside, overcast. And so I reached for something that I first heard about from Jeremy Fragrance, and that is Encre Noir, the original. Now you can pick this up at discounters for a steal of a deal in my opinion. This is about 27 bucks on discounters. Again, links will be down in the description if you wanna check this one out. Jeremy Fragrance, when I first heard about this, he described this, and I'm not quoting him directly, this is kind of paraphrasing what he said, but he said this is like sadness in a bottle, this is like a fragrance of evil, of like being alone in a cave with like running out of dopamine or something to that degree. And everything, I, I was just like, an evil fragrance in a bottle, like for 27 bucks, let me, let me check this one out. And I was pleasantly surprised. I get the vibe he was going for, like I don't think this is sadness in a bottle. This actually puts me in a fairly good mood. It cheers me up on those jury days because it really fits that vibe. It is a very dark, very moody, rooty, like damp soil, dank forest, Halloween style fragrance. It's very bitter. It's like cypress and vetiver like are pretty much the only notes you get in this. It's a very woodsy, bitter style fragrance and I absolutely enjoy it. This can be very challenging for some people. I get it. You, you fall into the camp of either you really like this one or you really don't like this one. And I understand for people who do not like this one. It's, it's a challenging fragrance, but I really, really like it. Performance on this, about average. I get about six hours of longevity. And in terms of projection, it doesn't project out like big. I'm kind of glad it doesn't. This is very much kind of more of a personal, intimate style fragrance that I wear because I like to wear it. This is not going to be a compliment beast. You're not going to walk into a club wearing Encre Noir and you're going to have the, the women or the you know ladies or the gentlemen chasing you around. All right, but I've never tried. Like, comment down below. Have you ever worn Encre Noir to the club and, and been getting chased down by women and men? I, I think you might be lying, but not a compliment beast. This is something that you wear because you enjoy it, like all your fragrances should be, but this this one definitely is, is one that you would wear just for you. I absolutely love it. I think the scent profile is awesome. It just fits that kind of like Halloween, fall vibe written all over it. I absolutely love it. When I think of this one, I think of this as like a Gomez Adams or an Edward Scissorhands kind of signature scent. That's the kind of vibe I get from this. Absolutely love it. I think for $27, this is a steal of a deal. I think you should be checking it out. It's Encre Noir, the original. All right, so moving into Tuesday, I wanted to kind of move away from that Encre Noir, dark, bitter, woodsy style fragrance. And I wanted to pick up something that was a little bit more gourmand, a little sweeter, a little bit more fun and playful. Something that Jeremy Fragrance talked about a ton, and that is Halloween Man X. Now you can pick this up from discounters for about $25 for a 50 ml bottle. I, I was having trouble actually finding this on discounters for 100 ml bottles, but link down in the description for about 25 bucks for a 50 ml. I picked this up for a little bit cheaper back in the day. I think the prices have gone up in this. I'm not sure if it's because of the hype because Jeremy Fragrance and a lot of other reviewers were just talking about this one as like the best coffee gourmand fragrance of all time. I'm not sure if it's that, supply and demand. I'm not an economist, I don't know, but it has gone up in price since I first purchased it. It is what it is. Fragrance here, this got a ton of hype. Lots of people are talking about this as this awesome gourmand coffee style fragrance, the sweet tonka that's mixed in there with some like fresh spiciness, a little bit of leather, a little bit of booziness to it. That is all in here. I will say this is a good fragrance, 
but it's not a great fragrance. I was expecting a little bit more, and this is just my personal opinion. I think this is this is good, but it's not great. The, the opening on this, you get like a citrus, cardamom, lavender, which is a little bit surprising for what you're kind of thinking is gonna happen. It is, you know, a nice opening. It's a little on the synthetic side. And then as this kind of opens up a little bit more, you get that coffee note that's been touted with this fragrance quite a bit. A little bit of leather, a little bit of booziness, and you get some like tonka sweetness coming from the base, like that tonka kind of vanilla vibe coming through. What's funny with this, they have a mineral note in there as well, which I think is what makes this a little bit kind of funny for me in the opening and the kind of, the, as this starts to open up. Because the coffee note in here, it's not like a roasted coffee. It's not like a cappuccino coffee. It's kind of like a burnt coffee bean coffee note to me, to my nose. And it's not my, f I love coffee style fragrances, but that kind of coffee note just, it doesn't hit for me the way I was kind of expecting or the way I kind of prefer. So the coffee note for me is a little bit weird. I'm not sure again, if it's that mineral notes that's kind of mixed in there, giving it kind of like a metallic edge, kind of a burnt feeling to it. But again, good fragrance wasn't great. What I do really like about this is the dry down. The dry down gets a lot smoother and a little bit sweeter and kind of it, it comes together, but it takes a little while before it gets to that dry down. And, and I really start to kind of enjoy that, this fragrance. The opening in the mid, I'm kind of like meh about the whole thing. And by the time it dries down, it settles in. You still get that burnt coffee note, which I'm again, not a huge fan of, but the sweetness from the Tonka and the vanilla vibe start coming through a little bit more. So it makes it a, an enjoyable fragrance. But like I said, I don't think this was as, for me, as deserving as the, of the hype as it actually got. That's just my personal opinion. Some people absolutely love this fragrance and that's totally cool. You can enjoy this fragrance. You can disagree with me. This is just my personal opinion on it. I don't think it was the, I don't think it deserved all the hype that it got. Performance on this, I will give credit to though. The performance on this is good. I get about eight hours of longevity off this. First two hours of projection are pretty good. It does settle in a little bit closer after that, but performance, I will my tip my hat to the performance. The performance on this is very good. For the price point, $25, $27 for a 50 ml, I think this is a you know a good pickup. It is a good cheapie. But again, for me, I think it's a good fragrance. It's not a great fragrance, but if it sounds like something you might enjoy, I suggest maybe you check it out. Form your own opinion about it. But that's Halloween Man X. All right, so moving into Wednesday, I wanted to feel powerful. Powerful like Jeremy Fragrance. I wanted to wear something that was gonna make me feel like a man, something that was just hyped up in the community for a very long time and I decided I'm going to try this one out because I want to feel powerful and I want to feel like a man and that is Bentley for Men Intense. I'm sorry that was a little little dramatic but you can pick this bad boy up for about $27 at discounters is that right? Sorry 34 34 to 38 dollars on discounters I'm gonna have links down in the description. I do think 34 to 38 dollars for the quality of juice in here that is a really good deal on this one. This one has been talked about a ton. Everybody talks about Bentley for Men Intense of the Bentley for Men line. This one gets talked about the most and as like a powerful beast mode performing fragrance. Again, this one gets thrown in a lot of lists. Uh, I would say, I would agree in terms of the performance, this does last a very long time. I think I get about eight, 10 hours, no problem of longevity off this. And it is loud for the first two, three hours. It does push off pretty heavy. And you know, it is, it is a powerful, powerful fragrance. No breakdown, what you get out of this is like some black pepper, you get some boozy whiskey, you get some incense, and you get some benzoin mostly out of this. It is a very, very boozy, masculine, manly style fragrance, for sure. The booziness in this can almost be a little bit overwhelming, even to me, like I, I enjoy this fragrance, but I'd say for like the first hour, the booziness is like almost something I kind of have to like work my way through a little bit because it's very, very boozy. You get that, that whiskey and that spice right at the top with that smoke from the incense. A lot of people say this is like blind buy worthy. I would disagree. I think this is kind of a bit of an acquired taste. I think if you can, you should try and get your nose on this before you buy it. If it's like the note breakdown that you think is right in your wheelhouse, then by all means blind buy this, but I would not recommend this as a blind buy. I think this is a little bit challenging for some people. This is definitely for a bit of the older sort of crowd, like 30 plus, 40 plus, I'd say this is something that you could try out. I don't think the younger crowd will like or appreciate this as much. Cause again, it is very like, strong, masculine, manly, sort of rich, powerful style fragrance. As this dries down though, that's my favorite part about this one. That booziness starts to kind of subside a little bit. It's always going to be there, but it does kind of 
lessen as this dries down. And you get this beautiful benzoin that comes through that makes this a little bit sweeter. So you get that sweetness, you mix it with the incense, a little bit of spiciness with that booziness. And I absolutely love the dry down on this. The dry down on this is where the magic happens for me. Just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. I see what the hype is all about. I see why people recommend this one because it is a gorgeous style fragrance, but it is a little bit challenging. It's not blind buy worthy. I think, it, again, you should probably get your nose on this before you go out and purchase it. But I really happen to enjoy this one. Performance on this is monstrous. I do get great performance out of this. $34, $38, links down in the description. I think this is a great pickup. Check it out. It's Bentley for Men Intense. All right, so moving into Thursday, I needed to get away from like the really heavy fragrances, the Bentley for Men's Intense and the Encre Noirs. I wanted to reach for something that was a little bit more simple, a little cleaner, a little fresher, kind of a dumb reach fragrance, and that is Mont Blanc Individual. Now you can pick this one up at discounters for between $25, $30. Again, links will be down in the description. That's for like a full presentation or a tester. That's the, the range I'm giving you right there. Jeremy Fragrance recommended this all the time and he probably gave the most accurate description of this, which is fresh, clean laundry with a bit of raspberry. And that's exactly the vibe I get from this. This has a, no pun intended, a laundry list worth of notes that are included. So I'm not gonna list everything that's there. But what you get kind of in the opening is some citrus some like pineapple, some mint, you get this clean lavender. In the base, you get some of that raspberry, some like woods, musks, patchouli that starts coming through. So it does have that masculine vibe, but it just, the vibe of this overall is just fresh, clean, relaxing laundry. That's just how it smells. And I love that kind of scent profile. It's so easy. It's just a dumb reach fragrance and you're gonna smell just fresh out the shower kind of vibes going on. Absolutely love it. Great, fresh, clean style fragrance. Performance on this sucks. And that's kind of why this falls short. This was hyped up quite a bit by Jeremy Fragrance and I don't get great performance out of this one. I might get four hours out of this. Projection is pretty much non-existent in a lot of points, but I love the scent profile. You can see how much I've used of this. Like I do use this quite a bit as a bedtime fragrance because it's that fresh, clean, relaxing style vibe to this. I wear this as a bed fragrance all the time. I think it's fantastic. And by the time I fall asleep, the ride's over and I don't even notice the projection and longevity suck, but love the scent profile. I think the hype on this one though, should have maybe mentioned that the performance is absolutely dismal, but it is what it is, it happens. And this might be just my skin chemistry, you know, it could be just me, but I think others out there might agree that the performance on this isn't fantastic, but I think the fragrance and the scent profile is fantastic. I think you should check it out. It's Mont Blanc Individual. All right, so moving into Friday, I wanted to feel classy, sophisticated, and a little bit gentlemanly. And so I reached for something that Jeremy Fragrance talks about all the time, constantly recommends, that is Aqua de Gio Profumo. Now you can pick this fragrance up for about $95 on discounters. Again, I'll have a link down in the description if you want to check this one out. This is the more expensive one on the list this week. And I think kind of deservedly so it is an Armani fragrance. It's not a clone. This is like the OG Armani fragrance. And so you are going to pay kind of designer prices even at discounters. But I do think this is worth it just because I am such a fan of the original Aqua de Gio. That was like my signature scent back in the day. Love that one, wore it all the time. It was like a compliment monster back when I was, I'm not gonna tell you how old I was when I was wearing it, but back in the day when I was wearing it, awesome fragrance, really enjoyed it. Ladies seemed to enjoy it as well. So I was a little hesitant on this one. I was like, well, why would I need to buy Profumo? Is it, is it just kind of a, the same thing as the original Aqua de Gio? And I was wrong. It has that DNA, but this incense note that's added to this, adds an element of kind of dark mysteriousness to it, a little bit more classy, gentlemanly, like black suit and tie kind of feel. Whereas the OG, a little bit more on the casual side. This is a casual fragrance, you can wear this casually, but it does have that kind of powerful CEO, classy gentleman sort of vibe going on to it, along with that kind of dark mysteriousness as well with that incense note that's added to it. it. Still has that classic DNA. It's got that C notes, that bergamot up top. It's got some like nice green aromatics in the mid, a little bit of spice to it. But with that, that added incense, along with that patchouli that's in the base, makes this a fantastic fragrance. I can see why a lot of people enjoy this one. Very versatile, very clean, very fresh, but still has that like dark, mysterious, masculine, powerful sort of edge to it. And I really, really enjoy this one. Performance on this is average to maybe a little bit above average. I get about six, seven hours of longevity on this. In the first hour or two, it's got some decent projection. Not a beast mode fragrance, but it does perform pretty well. For the price point, I think this does okay because it is a little bit more of an expensive fragrance, but it is a classic and it's just got that little added incense smokiness to it. 
That makes this a really good pickup and I'm glad I have it in my collection. That's Aqua de Gio Profumo. All right, so there you have it. That's seven fragrances that Jeremy Fragrance talked me into buying. And I wanna hear from you guys. Has you ever come across a fragrance because of Jeremy Fragrance that he hyped up a lot that you ended up buying? Let me know. Go down in the comment box, start typing right now. Has Jeremy Fragrance ever convinced you to buy a fragrance? The first time you ever heard about a fragrance was from Jeremy Fragrance or he just sold you on it so well that you're just like, fine, I'm gonna go buy this fragrance. Go, go let me know. Go down in the comment box, let me know what you bought. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all next time.